today I'm really excited to share some rehousings with you. I have not set up my tarantula room yet, but I did just do these rehousings into some larger enclosures for some of my my larger um, adults. I will set up after I set up my tarantula uh, room. I will do a a full tour. But for now, this is what I got to share with you. So let's go get started. Okay, I have a rehouse project, and this has to do with my Afona Pelma Calcades Yantara, and this is a critter cage. It has a sliding screen top with lockable latch, and it's a 10 gallon size. It's 20 inches long, 10 inches wide by 12 inches high. And the reason that I'm putting her in here is that she was wild caught, which is not something I'm fond of. And she was very restless in the first um, cage that I put her in, which was a habisphere. And I have her in a Jamie's enclosure right now. She's in the room here. There she is right there. And I don't feel that the substrate is deep enough or that it's um, the right consistency to accommodate her. And I'm curious to see if she wants to burrow more. And the ventilation holes are not too very high on the Jamie's enclosure, so I want to give her a chance to burrow. So I'm going to put a lot of substrate in here and make it really deep and so that she can't fall and also so that she can burrow and see how it goes. I have my um, Zilla Critter Cage, the 10 gallon, all cleaned up. I had to do a bit of scrubbing and removing some sticky tape and silicone that was on the side with some fingerprints and stuff. And now I'm going to use a mixture of the um, Zilla Jungle Mix. It's fur and sphagnum peat moss soil. And I'm going to mix that with cocoa fiber and put it in this tank. So here I go. What I want to do is get uh, my Afonapelma calcades Yantara out of her current enclosure. This is a Jamie's large terrestrial enclosure and I would like to use her substrate in her new area as well. So I'm going to try to get her into this catch cup here. Oh yes, you're a big spider, I know. I know you're nervous. Come on. Come on. Oh, kicking hairs, kicking hairs. It's not necessary. your sideways. Come on. Come on, let's go. You got it. You can do it. It's okay. She was like, no, I don't want to go into a cup again. Not the cup. So I'm just holding this against her and applying just a little gentle pressure, so slightly. All right. It's like, I'm about done with this being in cups. How many times do I have to go into a cup? Well, maybe this will be the last time you'll, you'll have to go into a cup for a long, long, long time. Okay, I'm gonna transfer all this dry substrate over. I also have some desert sand left over 
from the previous project, so I'm going to add some of that in with this substrate as well. Okay, now I have a and kind of closure set up for my Ophonopoma calcades. This is a 10 gallon aquarium and you can see the substrate is really deep. I'll measure it. I can have about eight inches, more like nine inches over here. I built up around the edges so she can't fall. And this is just an experiment. Um, because if it doesn't work for her, I will take her out. I don't ever leave my tarantulas in situations that are not good for them or that they don't like. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that I found out she was wild caught after I purchased her, and I guess that would explain why she was very restless in her enclosure. Then I transferred her into a Jamie's enclosure with, with drier substrate. But then I felt that she did not feel comfortable with that because she couldn't burrow. So this is a mixture of sand and some something called Zilla Jungle Mix and a lot of dry cocoa fiber. So it isn't completely dry, it's not too damp, and it's really deep, and I'm hoping that for her, she will be able to burrow. When she first was in her enclosure, she did try to burrow and then she gave up. This is all yours. There you go. You have a burrow, a nice one. She's kind of unsure. She's like, again, we have to do this again. And I really haven't put a lot of decorations in here. She's from the desert. Um, she has a cactus. Um, I just want her to be able to move the substrate around. That's my main goal for her. This has a locking lid. All right, so, so there she is. The lighting in this room can be just terrible sometimes. One of these days I'm going to get a lighting kit, but that's not in my budget right now, but it'll be a relief when I do. Just working with this natural spectrum light that my friend gave me, that her mother was going to send to the thrift store, it's something that she used when she was crafting during the winter. And it really works pretty well, but it doesn't light up a big area. It's better for small things like showing uh, feedings or up close pictures of my tarantulas. So I don't want her to start climbing the edges of this. If she ends up doing that, I will put her back in the Jamie's enclosure for her own safety. I can also put her in a smaller five gallon because I have a 5.5 gallon so I will try that as well and I this just may be a failed experiment because I I tried a lot of things before and it's easy to forget after several months go by all the things that were tried and I just didn't feel that it was working for her don't feel that she's happy because she just sits there and I don't think it's because she wants to be on display or you know she doesn't want to be out in the open I really think it's that I can't make it so that she can burrow in there. The holes for the ventilation are too low. So if I put substrate in it above the holes, then it's going to just come out the holes. So the only way is to put her in something deeper. Okay, there's been a little slight change of plans and I decided to put Yantara in the 5.5 gallon. And the reason is, I just don't think she needs as much space as the other, the 10 gallon tank. And I'm gonna put Peekaboo, my um, <clears throat> Lassiodora Parahybana, into the 10 gallon. And I don't think Peekaboo will ever need a bigger home. Um, 
I'm hoping that my Aphonopelma calcades will find this nice deep burrow that I've made down here and she will really like it. And I hope to see her digging soon. That will really make me happy and, and I'll know that the, what I did was the right thing, that that's what she needed. And so that's what I'm going to be watching for in the next two weeks is whether she starts digging and making the burrow deeper because it was really heartbreaking to see her start to try and dig and then give up when she was in the other enclosure with just cocoa fiber and I think this will be perfectly adequate adequate for her for you know the rest of her her time so so I was going to measure the substrate in here so we're looking at seven between seven and eight inches so that should be that should be fine what I'm going to be watching for is to make sure she's not climbing on the mesh and uh, other than that we'll see how this goes this little Afonopelma simani came from the reptile expo that I went to on May 12th in Monroe Washington this one I call my messy messy tarantula because it's like tantrums happen and um, everything's uprooted the water dish and it's not that the the tarantula is having tantrums what is going on is that this one wants to burrow and can't because this tupperware thing is not deep enough so i'm going to put this one in a 5.5 gallon tank with lots of substrate just like i did with my aphonopelma calcades i think that that'll make make this one much happier so we're going to get on with that now when i got these Zilla critter cages. This is basically a 5.5 gallon terrarium. You peel the sticker off and the ink is all imprinted on on the side. So what do you do to get it off? I just take some Comet and water. Just go in a circular motion and it comes right off. You don't have to scrape it with a razor or anything like that. And then I just rinse it. I should add that, you know, a product like Comet or any cleaners like that are not safe to use around your invertebrates. And if you do use it, you need to rinse it off really well and don't use it on the inside of the tank. As far as the inside of the tank, I'm just going to wipe it with a towel with some water. Here's my enclosure for my beautiful Aphonopelma Simani. Like I said, it's a 5.5 gallon tank. The substrate is pretty deep in here. At its deepest point, it's eight inches. At its lowest, it's about seven around the edges. So the tank itself is only about 10 inches tall. So there really isn't room to fall or anything like that. Here's the little guy. don't know if it's a guy or not, but I don't know. I have my suspicions for a reason, but we'll see. All right. Hoping that it'd be way more happier in here. Can move the dirt around as much as he or she wants to. there we have it this is a locking lid this mesh is pretty tough so I don't know that there'll be a lot of chewing we'll see maybe with more dirt to move around there, there won't be as much restlessness and that's that is what theory I'm testing out here and I will follow up and let you know how all of this went and I'm going to rehouse my Lasiodora parahibana peekaboo into this 10 gallon tank. It's already been set up and I was going to put uh, Yantara in here but I changed my mind. The um, Laziodora parahibana is going to be a much larger tarantula. Also I have not witnessed this one climbing a lot so 
I feel that this will be a safer setup for the LP and benefit the LP more in the long run. I've got my little stinker. Find a place for the little stinker's water dish. Put it in a place where it's easy to get to. I'm going to turn this around so that it's aimed toward get ready to kick. All right, little one. Go into your burrow there. Come on. Don't kick. Come. Come on. You don't need to kick. No, you don't need to do that. No. Apparently, that's not what Peekaboo thinks. Okay, so Peekaboo has a really nice enclosure. Big. Should last a long time. Doesn't need to kick any more hair at me for who knows how long. Just lid on. All these rehouses went smoothly. Here's Peekaboo's enclosure. And Peekaboo's down inside the burrow right now. And this is what Peekaboo was in. As you can see, there's a huge size difference there. This is what Peekaboo came in, and uh, this can be used for someone else who's growing. I have quite a few slings who are gonna need a new house, so that'll be good. Next, I am going to rehouse Mercury. Mercury is my green bottle blue, and Mercury has gone inside of this Choya cactus. And it's a shame to mess up all of this webbing, but the thing is, if I do it now, then it won't have to be done after even more webbing is made. So I'm going to go ahead and move all of this stuff into there. Then I'll be back. So what I got going on here is that my green bottle blue is in this Choya cactus. And that actually makes it easy because then I can just... Put a catch cup over the end. I mean, that sounds easy, doesn't it? Let's see here. I'm gonna angle it down and over. And there you have it. And it's closed off. I'm gonna pick it up and move it. In the meantime, while somebody's in jail, I'm going to take this substrate and add it to the new enclosure. Green bottle blue, luckily, you know, likes it more dry. I might have to replace these flowers that I spent all that time working on. Somebody's going to be a lot happier, though. I'm, I just know it. I know it. Sometimes poor tarantulas, they're like, what's going on? Somebody's ruining my house. But then in the end, it all works out for them. And this is about as high as I can get the substrate in here anyway because of the ventilation holes. So I've mixed this with sand, cocoa fiber, and some vermiculite. Let me see what kind of landscaping I can do in here. And then I will be back. We are upgrading to a big spooder water bowl. That just goes to show you can be out in the wild moving sticks around. There could be a tarantula inside and you would never know because it's not going to just come running out and bite you. Poor little guy, you gotta start all over. This kind of gives it a centerpiece. It can. This one is a suspect female. Some of the web webbing. And the very nice hammock going on that I destroyed, of course. 
There are lots of little anchor points in here. You can make a new hammock. And now that you're a bigger spider, you can make more web than before. So this will very, very well be a good enclosure for this green bottle blue for the rest of its life. These rehousings are all too easy. I'm sure this one will come out when it's ready. And there's my new green bottle blue enclosure. As you can see, it's quite a bit larger than the old one. Still inside the Choya, so. I'm rehousing my Honduran curly hair from a critter keeper into this enclosure that I had my Chromatopelma cyanio pubescens in. That was one of the first DIY enclosures that I made and have a video for. I noticed that my curly hair, the Brachypelma albopelosum, has been hanging out by its water dish a lot, so I made sure that the substrate is a little sprayed. I'm going to give this one the coconut shell hide that the LP had. The LP has a fancy new hide made out of dirt. A little hot water dish. And this one also has a lot of web. Actually, let me put the web inside the hide. It's all webbed up, all of it, so there we go. New home, something new, something old. Right now, I think this one's kind of a, I don't know if I would call it a juvenile yet, maybe. But, likes to spend a lot of time out, unless it's in pre-molt. And then it goes inside and webs itself off. Okay, it did for about a month last time. Okay. So, a cute little new home. That little curly hair. Come out. There you go, be shy. A new hide for you. And there we go. Another rehouse. This is just boring, isn't it? So I thought I would give a an overview, maybe a small collection tour. I'm not gonna take everybody out but um, show you what I have. And later when I have my tarantula room set up, I will do a collection tour where I go over everyone and show you who they are. And hopefully everyone will have names by then as well. So on this shelf, on the top shelf on the left, that is my Brachypelma albopillosum, my Honduran curly hair. This one was just rehoused into the enclosure that I used to have my green bottle blue in. My green bottle blue is now in the Jamie's enclosure to the right. So that's where my Chromatopelma cyanio pubescens is. And it will probably not need another enclosure. This is a Jamie's large enclosure. And that is where my Aphonopelma calcades yantara used to be. Then below in the 10 gallon tank, that is where I just put my LP. My LP is a juvenile, it's about three and a half inches. And if you look in the center of the tank, you can actually see it just hanging out there. And I thought that this would be a perfect enclosure for the LP because the LP likes to be out in the open, doesn't do a lot of climbing around, isn't particularly restless. Over here to the right, it's a lot of glare. That is my um, Grandma Stola Polker Pace, little thing. He's still in a critter keeper. I say he, but I don't know that for a fact. And let's see if we can get some of the glare off of here. Down below, right there in the center, 
This is my Megaphobema robustum, the Colombian giant red leg. And this one's doing very well. It has a nice burrow that it hangs out in a lot, comes out to the surface when it's hungry. Right now it's not hungry, so it's been, been hiding out. And then right to the left here, and this is a 5.5 gallon tank. This is where I put my Afona Palma Simani that we got at the expo a couple weeks ago. And below the Afona Palma Simani is my uh, Pelinobius muticus, my king baboon. She is five years old and 4.5 inches. She has a nice deep burrow and she comes up to the entrance when she's hungry. And right over here to the right of her is my Therophosinae species Rotan that I got from Fear Not Tarantulas. And this is a about two and a half inch female. And she has a really extensive burrow, probably the most extensive of any of my tarantulas so far. So moving over here, I have a habisphere, and this is where snot gurgle. My grandma stole a pulchra, the Brazilian black. And that is where that one is. And this one just molted as well. We're probably looking at going up to maybe about four inches by now, maybe. Up above, we have a lot of glare. That is another 5.5 gallon tank that I just got, and that's where my Phonopelma calcades has been rehoused into. She's up in the corner, right hand corner. And then to the right, we have three of these little baseball enclosures. And the top one is my Phonopelma hensi. The middle, okay, the top one is actually my Euathlus species red. The center one is my Haplocosmia Himalayana, and the bottom is the Aphonopelma hensi. The Aphonopelma hensi just molted. And then up top there, that one is my Brachypelma colossi. Above that is my Formictopus concerides, and then there are two enclosures up above. The one on the left is my Laziodora parahibana sling, and the one on the right is my Acanthoscuria geniculata. And then in the center, I have three little vials. The one on the left is a, an Aphonopelma burica. Aphonopelma burica. The center one is a Ua, Ua palestris campostratus, and then I have a Cochiana brunipes, and in the back is a Nandu chromatis. And then up here, I have um, two more that I got at the expo on the 12th of May. The top one is my golden blue leg baboon, the Harpectura pulcher piece. And below that is my mm, Ceragyrus darlingi, the rear horned baboon. And besides one little jumping spider, well, two little jumping spiders, this is everybody that I have. I let my hobo spider free. Uh, it was a mature male, or very quickly maturing male. And I also let, um, my zebra jumping spider free. And here you can see up here what I'm talking about with my Brachypelma albo pelosum. I'm liking to hang out by the water dish and I'm not sure why that is, but just what this one likes to do. Let's see if we can get a closer look at the Laziodora parahibana. Sorry for all the shaky camera. So there's peekaboo. Peekaboo is in a big new enclosure, and Peekaboo doesn't seem too shy about anything, so I think this one's going to be pretty happy here. My Carabina Versicolor, my uh, Martinique or Antilles Pink Toe that I just created an enclosure for. So 
here's here's that one. It's out in the living room right now. <laughs>